Powered by Go Goat Sports in partnership with TSN, it is episode 62, season four of the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast, presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey. Hey, I recognize that room. If you're watching the YouTube channel, we can see yeah. that Ray Ferraro is back home. Man, it's been a while. Must have been nice walking in the front door. It was. Uh... As you know, Drake's being the dog lover I, I, huh. that you are, I, uh, oh, I came Ollie home. Was nobody excited? was home. Oh, <laughs> Ollie, come, Ollie sits. Riley's Riley, our sixteen-year-old. His bedroom overlooks kind of the driveway, and uh, Ollie always sits up in the window. I, you know, he's guarding the property <laughs> or whatever he does. And as soon as I came in, I I see him, so I yell to him, and he kind of jolts up. And he comes flying down the stairs. Man, it's the best. I just nah. so I was home, and then we had. Uh, had family dinner last night, so I saw all the boys, uh, all four nice. of them were home, and which is kind of nice, and the grandkids, and um, yeah, loud and chaotic, and had the Leafs game on in the background, and um, and then uh, off to Dallas and Seattle. So just a really, really nice to be home. Yeah, well, the playoffs are a little wild and chaotic, as you well know, as well as Oof. you get set for the second round. Let's. Dive into our headlines, Ray, presented by our good friends at Tim Hortons. And you mentioned the Leafs, Ray. So the Toronto Maple Leafs have a beautiful start to game two. Jump out to the early lead, uh, followed by a horrendous, inexplicably bad second period and a 66-second sequence that did them in. So take us into the psyche of a player or in this case, a collection of players, because you can't pin it on one guy, you know. As much that, as everybody seems to be trying to. Trying to, correct. Yeah. It, so how do not. you shift? How do you have such a, a really strong start in a good first period and then just push it off the rails throughout, not just the start, but throughout that second period? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by saying this line that gets said over and over again that just drives me crazy because it's not possible. And that's, we have to, we have to dominate or we have to control a 60 minute game. You're not going to do it. Never Mm -hmm. happens has never happened in the history of hockey that you control all 60 minutes. It just doesn't matter. The, or it's just not possible. What does matter is the time when you don't, you don't shoot yourself in the foot. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to have some wobbles and you're going to give up a goal. That's why, you know, the, the best teams have four or five shutouts per year. They don't have 26. It's right. just, it's too hard. So you give up a goal. Well, then you can't give up another one, right? Like in it's, it, you have to be able to, it, the best teams are able to put a stop to the other team's momentum. Mm-hmm. You know, they like, so Florida gets that first goal. And the only thing that matters is the next three or four minutes that nothing happens. You don't have, you're up to one. You don't have to answer the goal. You don't have to get momentum back. You have to kill Florida's momentum. And that means for the next three or four minutes, which is one rotation through the lines, is you get the puck forward. Unless I'm looking right at you to make a pass, mm-hmm. you chip it forward. You four check, you neutral zone four check, you kill the play, you get it back, you push it up the boards pretty soon. The energy in the building changes, both Mm -hmm. home and road. And all the Leafs did yesterday was turn a little bit of a brush fire into a forest fire. In in that moment, that that second goal should never happen in the way it happens. Now, sometimes the other team's going to make a great play. And now you've got a body blow and a body blow, and you've you've got to withstand it, right? You give Mm -hmm. up two, and hey, that's the way it goes. The Leafs just wilted. And they, so Florida, I, Paul Maurice was talking about it after, I, I think, is it five games in eight days they played or something yep. like that? Yes. Yeah. So they don't have great legs anyway. They're not going to have the energy to play the game they need to play. But you gave them a free out. You gave them a get out of jail free card. And that's like the old Leafs that we, you know, we've all, we've said for a long time this year, it just yeah. feels different. That didn't feel different. And even in the third period, Dregs, when the game's 3-2, what I kept looking at was this is absolute mayhem all over the place. Yeah, That is not a mature approach to a playoff game. 
I, I was in Carolina the other night for game one. They got up on New Jersey, and New Jersey had played a lot of hockey, kind of the same as Florida. And Carolina just, they played like robots. Clinical. It was unbelievable. Jersey so fast, they had nowhere to go. Toronto hits a crossbar, Florida hits a post. Toronto gets three chances, Florida gets two chances. Yeah. Uh, Samsonov made that one save. Riley fell over top of him. He's doing a spread ang- or snow angel. Somehow he stops the puck. I'm not talking about the chances they generated and were unlucky that they didn't finish. Yeah. But the scope of the game had no, I hate this. It had no structure to it. Mm. It was like their skill was either going to get them a goal or it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And man, they had, I don't know, did they have six, seven great chances? I mean, the puck At least. could have and maybe should have gone in, Agreed. but it didn't. Yeah. But they they let Florida back in the game yeah. where if they just shut that down after that first goal against, like, I know what, I'm going to back up just a second. I know a lot of people, Dregs, are staring at that, the Matthews turnover, right, on the, on the goal. Yeah. Yeah. With Marner. Yeah. Well, I, I was just going to say, I hope it's with Marner. There is zero chance that pass should be made. No. None. Like skate it Marner, out or, or, or flip it to the Chip it off the boards. Yeah. Marner's too good to make that pass. Like he's too smart yeah. to make that pass. That was a soft play into an area of the ice where there's probably going to be people. And once it's turned over, well, then it's, it's you know, all... Every, everything's off the board. It's like it's a free for all on a turnover and a rush. And mm. um, I, I mean, I think the goalie's been more like Samsonov's been more than fine. I agree. Um, they they just let they keep letting Florida off the hook. I'm telling. I don't want to keep my whole life, exp- you know, comparing it to the '93 team, <laughs> but Pittsburgh didn't respect us. Right. They didn't. They kept letting us off the hook. We should have been buried out of that series. They fell asleep the first game. We won. They blew us out in game two. Then pretty soon the series is 2-2. Mm-hmm. Like that shouldn't have happened. Yeah. And now you got to win four out of five. And you got, you know, and three of the games are in, or in, or yeah, three of the games are in Florida. Yeah. Like, oh, by the way, where are the Leafs fans bitching about the two days off now? Oh, they're not. No. It's kind of a good no. thing now. No, kind of it, it is, but I, yeah. I think it still favors Florida because of what you said earlier. Yeah. And and Maurice acknowledged it. This is a team that's playing on fumes based on the amount. And Sergei Bobrovsky is relatively fresh, right? He doesn't have the same workload as the rest of the group. Um, so he comes in razor sharp in the first two games of this series. Now the Florida players get a couple of days to – you know, reset and recharge. So they're going to be super motivated. As well, well, doesn't that tell you game three's it, right? Game yeah. three's it. I like agree. It's the, it's, yeah. You know, there, there might not be, there might not be a water bottle safe if no. Florida wins uh, game three. <laughs> You're referencing Kyle Dubas firing yeah. the water bottle. That's outstanding. Um, those guys, they, they can't do any, they scratch their ear and those guys are on camera, right? Like, that would annoy me so much. And back in the day, early days of, of broadcast TV, I mean, the general manager would say to the producer, don't, I don't want any ISOs of me. Leave me alone. Don't point yeah. the camera at me. And you'd respect it, right? You were a good partner. You wouldn't do it. Now they have no say. They have no say. No. Like, do you think Sheldon Keith likes being on camera after every penalty call or almost every whistle? No coach does, but that's part of the drama. Part of, part of the thing now. Yeah. Hey, um, quick thought on Sam Bennett. I mean, this guy's just a nasty bit of business, isn't he? You know, yeah. I, I call him sneaky dirty, and uh, I, I don't mean that to be derogatory. I'm sure he wears it as a badge of honor because he hits like a truck, you know, uh, he's hard on the four check. He can generate offense, but specific to game two, he had two situations. One where he hits Matthew Nice behind the net pretty hard into the glass and into the boards, goes down, rides him down <laughs> into the ice. And that was not that long after Nice had been hit high by Matthew Kachuk. So could have been cumulative 
Uh, probably. Is it concussion related? They're not going to specify. I believe it is. So you hope for the best, but it takes an impactful player out of uh, the lineup for the Maple Leafs. And then you fast forward later in the game where you've got the battle in front between Hasham Bennett and Michael Bunting. And Bennett cross checks Bunting in the neck and, you know, Bunting goes down and he's holding his neck and there's a big, you know, kerfluffle about that post game, including Sheldon Keefe you know, basically saying, hey, our guy, Austin Matthews, got suspended two games for something very similar on Rasmus Dahlin during the winter class. This isn't, none of that was suspendable to me. I, for me, if you want to find him for the cross check, I guess that's that's what you do. But how about you? Does this get to the level of supplemental discipline? Oh, I, I think it, at the most, it's a fine. Yeah. Uh, the first play is, um, probably happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Um I, again, I'm doing the game in Jersey the other night. Uh, I don't know, within the first two and a half minutes, both benches were screaming about a horrific penalty call. <laughs> like, like it, it's the same in every game is my point. Right. Right? Like, there's, it's impossible to get it all right. Every team is aggrieved, you know, terribly in each mm-hmm. and every game. Um, it just happens to be if it's on you or not, uh, right. the cross check, uh, to me is a, is a fine for sure. Um, the difference I would say, whether we all, you, you have to flip that around. If you're a leaf fan that is, com- or management that's completely, um, outraged by that play, you have yeah. to look at that, that that's a player of similar worth on your team, cross checking one of your players. Would you say that's a suspension? And they would say in the playoffs, no, it's a fine. Right. They, I, I think that would be the Matthews cross check on Darlene was more retaliatory and more um, premeditated because mm-hmm. Matthews had a moment to think about it. And to me, that's why that was more suspendable than this. Just is it to try and compare the two plays. But to me, it's a fine and, and no more. Um, mm. And um I'll tell you that that Florida Panther team turned like that in game two yeah. uh, against Boston when Sam Bennett came back in the lineup. They'd missed them for 14 games down the stretch. And, you know, they were, you just looked at their lineup and it was like, eh, you know, like they're missing something. And, yeah. you know, and then Bennett came back and him and Kachuk are, they're, they're quite a pair together. That's for sure. No kidding. Uh, all right. Well, we'll have plenty of time to look forward to game three of the Leafs and the Florida Panthers. I uh, want to rewind a little bit here um, just because of the spectacle of the two games. You know, it's it, it, it starts with Joe Pavelski of the Dallas Stars and a four goal performance. And then it's followed up with Leon Dreisaitl and a four goal performance in, in a losing effort. And there's some history with you, my friend. Right. Yeah, I feel Dating sorry for those 93. guys. They- I feel sorry for those guys. I mean, what brilliant performances, Drake's like what amazing performances that by, by one individual trying to single-handedly drag his team into a game. Yeah. Well, um, you remember 93? Oh, what was the, what went? was the year you were talking about? Oh, 93. Yeah. Do you have a little time? Um, <laughs> it is, it is crazy when a night like that happens Yeah, that the puck keeps coming to you. Like, as you, as I thought about, like, you know, we lost 6-4 to Washington. Ally Afraidy had a hat trick that night for, for Washington. And um, it was 6-4. We were down, like, 5-1 in the third. And I mm-hmm. got three in the third to make it 5-4. Like, every time I turned around, I'm in the slot, and the puck just, oh, would you look at this? I should shoot it in the net. <laughs> like, it was ridiculous. And one of my favorite highlights is I get the fourth one. And it's a goofy rebound, and I shoot it. It goes right through Don Beaupre in the net. And he turns around and smashes his stick over the crossbar. When I saw the highlight of that, it was just like, you know, you can see, like, all our team is like, ah, we've scored. And his stick is in 43 pieces. But Unreal. for Pavelski to come, I identify with Joe more than Leon. I mean, like, Leon plays a game that, I mean, not many people can play. It's just right. yeah. remarkable what he does. The goal, the creativity to bank it off of Brassois is one thing. The way he shoots is oh, just, I love it. I just, Dreisaitl's so, yeah. such an amazing player. 
but I identify with Joe. He's not big enough. He's not fast enough. You know, he's, uh, you wouldn't say he's always a rough and tumble player, but I don't know that there's many people that have ever deflected the puck better than him. Uh, Certainly not in in the last thirty years. I, and I, how I hard he works at it, right? He practices oh, it man. all the time. So I'm doing the Carolina game the other day. Joe, uh, Brent Burns shot half a dozen pucks through the slot, looking for that high tip. Mm-hmm. In San Jose, Pavelski had his stick on every one of them. Right. It was it, like those two guys were like they were connected. It yeah. was so cool to watch. And so two of the tips that Joe had in his game were chest high. Like that's almost impossible to do because your stick is in the wrong angle. Yeah, yeah. And he made them both. And uh, what a great, great couple of nights for those guys. So fun to watch those those players play. So we talked a bit about the the Canes and the New Jersey Devils series. Um, let's visit in on the Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights. And, and this for me is a pick em series now. And, and I guess that seems pretty obvious based on how it started. Um, I don't think anybody would have projected though, that Edmonton was going to roll over Vegas. I don't think, uh, so, you know, just, oh, I don't think so. Did anybody, no. did anyone think that I, I, I picked Edmonton, but yeah, I think long, long yeah. series, but agreed. Yeah. yeah you, know. you know what Drake's, what really surprised me is, or really stood out is I think the way to say it is the difference of the way the goals all went in. Mm-hmm. So Vegas had those those two clumps of two goals really quickly, both in the first and the third period. And we talked earlier about the Leafs. You give up one, you've got to stomp out the momentum of the other. And it might be a little harder on the road than at home. The Leafs were at home. Uh, Edmonton was on the road. But Vegas got one and boom, they got another. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you talk about players that are sneaky dirty and say it in a positive way. You know who else fits in that is Mark Stone. Oh, for sure. He's always accidentally bonking somebody with his stick. He's always got, like, he's, oh, I just, he's a great player. Mm-hmm. And when he came back into that that lineup for Vegas, it it changed, in my opinion, changed everything for them. Right. He is. Like um, you saw, you saw the series or the, the video, right? Of him leaving the ice, um, you know, after practice or during practice, wherever it was. And he labored to get to the bench. And then you saw him walk behind the bench on his way to the dressing room. And anybody who's had any back issues whatsoever, I mean, I'm watching this and I can feel, you know, the, the pain. The cramp, like, right? The oh, cramp. And the, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that must hurt. And then, yeah, you know, he just, the treatment is there. You know, whatever he's doing to get himself in game shape, game readiness, he's doing. And he comes into the game and, and has an unbelievable performance. And I don't think people can appreciate how difficult that must be. Well, everything in, like, if you have hurt your back, like, everything you do becomes harder. Like, you yeah. brush your teeth and you got to go get some water out of the sink and you got to bend yeah. over. Now imagine when you're bending over to skate or all the power that comes out of your low back and, you know, the lower half of your body, if your back's wrong, you don't have a lot of it. And yet he's cobbled it together. One of the reasons I like watching him play is he is an unmade bed from the second he comes into the rink. Always. His hair is all over the place. His tie is always over here. He gets on the ice. He's always dropping his stick and knocking a glove off. And I just love watching him play because he's so good. He's so good. And man, um, that'll be a tough series. Edmonton will have to clean up a yes. little bit. Um, yeah. One of the reasons being is Vegas's defense will really balance out the uncertainty they have in goal. Right. It's a really good defense. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Brassois will give them adequate goaltending. But he's not going to do what Brassois or what uh, Bobrovsky's doing right no, now. That's no. not. I don't think it's at that level. But um, one other tip for Vegas: uh, stay out of the penalty box. Stay out of the box. Yeah. Oh my God! How about that power play? It's ridiculous. Uh, why don't we wrap up headlines with a thought on the Norris Trophy? I mean, we could go through them all, but let's just focus on the Norris for now. Um, Eric Carlson, Adam Fox, Kale McCarr, the Norris finalists. 
Mm-hmm. I, I I don't know how you can be surprised by it. I mean, we're voters. Um, you know, I voted, voted for Haskin and I voted for Haskin and not Fox in my top three. Same. Uh, uh, I got to think about this. I'd have to. Haskin might be four on my list. Anyway, okay. So I I had I had Carlson, um, Makar, and Haskinen. Okay. I, I mean, Makar is on mine and pretty high as well. Uh, I didn't have Fox. Carlson, number one. Um, do you understand the complaining about Makar being a finalist because of the injury factor and the fact that he played fewer games? No, I just think not really. Not, no, me neither. Body of the work, isn't it? I mean, it's not yeah. like this is a new year for Kale McCarr. Hey, Drake's. it's not like he played 42 games. Right. You know, like that That I would have an issue with unless he had 70 points in yeah. 42 yeah. games. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand it. I, I did notice when they started, I, I didn't put this, I didn't notice when they released, started releasing the clumps of awards, you know, like yeah. there was the Norris and there were the finalists and the Selkie and all that until I saw on Twitter, everybody complaining about who the players are. Everybody complains about their own guy. It's outrageous that this guy didn't make it maybe yeah. more like the, the people in LA are, are, you know, complaining about Kopitar and they're like, the well, Selkie. nobody stays up to watch. Yeah. But the three finalists for the Selkie are pretty good players. Yeah. Or the Bing. Yeah. Or the Bing. They're they're like, uh, who got left out that people are all uh oh, I think I forget. Somebody had one penalty. Well, the guys that got picked had two. It's not right. like they had twenty seven. Yeah. So this is I, I don't I put my vote in. Everybody's gonna get to see it. Everybody can complain or not complain. I do the best with it that I can. And Everybody's going to always uh, side with their favorite yeah. player or their player from their For local. Sure. And yeah, I, and I, I don't, know. I, I don't, I don't get the critique of Makar other than people would like their local player to be involved. Yeah, Jared Stahl, of course, uh, was one who tweeted out his his yeah. frustration, and and he made the suggestion that people in the East aren't paying attention to what's going on with the LA Kings, and I, I think it was Anze Kopitar specific to the Selkie. Um, it, it was, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess. But to your point, the the the, the finalists in in every category are deserving of being in that category and and yeah. that level of distinction. So I, I said this, I think, on some Harrison Price. What everyone should do, like, if you're going to go to social media and say, "Well, these idiots in the East aren't paying attention," okay, submit. You you don't officially have a vote. But go through the process. Put it on social media. Tell us who your finalists would be. I mean, go through every category. It's it's not an easy project, but you and I, and I would hope everyone else who's got the privilege of voting takes it very seriously. And we do do our work and our due diligence. Well, what I hate, Dregs, about the voting process is you can generally get a couple of guys. Like, you don't even have to think. And then... Yeah. You, you know, you're like player A, player B. Yeah. And then you got a bunch of guys that are kind of all the same. Yeah. And they're all at the, vi- you're not talking about mid-range players. You're talking about the best in the league. And in some cases, you're like, I, I can't figure out a way to separate them. I can look at advanced stats. I can look at the way that I've seen them play during the year. And it still comes down and you're like, it's him or him. Yeah. Right? Like that. it's just, That's it's it really, is. it's far more difficult than I thought it was going to be when I thought it, I thought it was going to be way more fun, uh, you know, to I'm, vote. I'm kind of with you because it's like, I get there and I'm like, oh, man, look at this. It's so hard to decide between putting these players in the, in the order. Now you, there'll be some votes. I'm sure when the, all the voting's released, there'll be some and you'll be like, how did that guy even get a vote? Yeah. Like there'll always be a couple yeah. of those. But it's and those it's are the so, those are the ones you should be most concerned with. Yes, but it's so hard because you know it matters, right? Like right. you want to make sure that every player who's had that type of season to be recognized gets the fair assessment and analysis of that recognition. And to your point, hey, yeah, if if if, if the ballot was eight, ten players deep, it'd be less hard, <laughs> but it's yeah. not. It's five, and it's a challenge when you're looking at. I, I would say this last thing for me, Dregs, on this is I take great pride 
so in seeing I. if the finalists are the ones I have. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's what I, I like. I'm like, okay, other people are seeing this in the right. same way. And I, and I like that. Those are your headlines. Thank you to Tim Hortons.